Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Welcome back for another crafty venture. And here we're carrying on with the Halloween card series for 2021. And in this case, I made four little cards for ATCs. My sweet friend Sierra from Sierra T Designs and I decided that we would trade some ATCs. And while she's a bit more of a pro at this, <laughs> I'm still very much learning this process. But she has held me true to the dimensions so i took two five by seven pieces of watercolor card and i am using my distress distress oxide sprays and my distress mica stains and i am having so much fun like i don't know what kept me from it i was talking to sierra about it and i don't know if i was afraid i don't know if i was uncertain i don't know if it was the mess associated with the sprays i don't know but i'm all about some unpredictable art right i love the gel press i love that kind of thing i like the grungy messy so I don't know what kept me from this. I mean, I've dabbled with my sprays here and there through my, my stencils, especially with A Colorful Life and um, using the gel press and things like that. But I don't know. This was the first time where I actually saw projects and not just the ATCs, but multiple projects through to completion with, with these backgrounds. And I am in love. I'm wondering... To be honest, now that I'm thinking about it and kind of processing it with y'all, y'all are my therapists right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's because of the mica stains. Because the Distress Oxides, obviously they're oxides, right? So they dry that kind of chalky finish. And it sometimes, at least for me, this is a, a girl who is extra and likes some blingy bling and some shine. I'm wondering if that chalkiness was just kind of I don't want to say unfulfilling because that's not the case but just not what I was looking for I guess in the process but once I got the mica stains and the mica sprays because I have some sprays as well have the antique bronze and the tarnished brass and the brushed pewter so I have several now but I think that shine of the mica is what did it for me and I can tell you I'm in love and like all that ink right there I didn't want to waste it so I pulled out another piece of watercolor card and yep sopping it up but it did get a little muddy which I don't mind mud I really don't mind mud it actually kind of looks like a mocha right <laughs> but I decided I wanted some more color so here they come again and I'm just gonna let us watch my process because extra I'm extra and I can't stop myself I cannot help myself I keep spraying and I keep layering <laughs> so we'll just watch for a minute oh and just before we start watching I just want to let you know the ones that I keep just opening up like this and just kind of flicking it on it's because those um, spray nozzles are a little bit clogged but I'll fix that that's not a problem I just need to soak them a bit but let's just watch my process y'all see how extra I am I can't stop myself here we go Watch those colors just bloom and run and drip. Isn't that cool? And I left that in for a reason because just the process of watching them bloom and run and drip is amazing. At least to my eyes. Now maybe you guys are thinking this chick's gone crazy. I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Be real with me. It, this is a safe space. <laughs> Sierra said they looked a little um, steampunky, and I can see that, but do you see that? Do you see that? <gasps> the flickering candle, I can't get enough. Like, that is my heart right now. That is life. That yellow, I wish I, you know, 
I don't know if you guys watched Tim Holtz's Christmas um, distress collection video today. I don't even know what to call it. <sighs> but how he was saying that he wanted the juniper in five gallon buckets. I feel that way about the juniper as well. That's my favorite of the ones he released today for Christmas. But this flickering candle, oh my heart. Like I can't get enough of it. I like them all, but the yellow, swoon worthy. Mm -mm -mm. And I wanted to just let it all dry naturally. And I did for some of them, but I just needed to carry on because I wasn't just making backgrounds. If I was just making backgrounds, yeah, I'd have them lined up on the table behind me. But look at me like I can't stop. <laughs> it's a little ridiculous. But again, look at that drippy, runny, blendy goodness. And remember, like Tim always says, wet on wet, they blend. Wet on dry, they layer. So I'm learning that. I'm very much a hands-on learner. I'm visual and I'm auditory, but I'm very much, very much hands-on, which is called kinesthetic. So yeah. I got to get my hands in there. I got to learn by doing. I got to learn by failure. I got to learn by success. And there's a lot of learning in my life through failure. <laughs> I will just put that out there. But here they are. And see, that's where Sarah was saying it's kind of steampunky, right? You see the kind of metally look. But I have to say, I got so excited, like I was just enamored and, ad and admiring them. This one's still wet. But I forgot to turn my camera back on <laughs> so I don't show you the process where I took that beautiful grungy argyle stencil and I run the um, crackle paste through it. And that's where the crackle paste is still drying. It's Well, it's, it's the Distress Texture Paste in Crackle, but I also use some Pasta Skiltura. I always have a hard time saying those things. But yeah, that's the one that I actually end up using for... For my backgrounds here and so it's a five by seven piece of card and I cut it down into four pieces because like I said Sierra was holding me true to those dimensions now she was not cutting me any slack beyond that the creative process was all mine so you can see that this back background is a little bit different the colors are more in the yellow which of course was the flickering candle and then some grays and blacks and so if I can remember properly it was empty tomb I think there's some brushed pewter and some black soot and that's how I got that color combo and just stamped it up with black ink and my Raven embossing powder from Brutus Monroe and this embossing powder here it's just I think it's called wedding sparkle something like that I've had this in my stash it's another one that I've probably had about 20 years but I wanted there to be some sparkle so I'm just hitting that embossing that's the um, Raven from Brutus Monroe. While it's already on my image, I just hit it with my heat tool so that it softens up a little bit. And then it kind of, mm, I want to say it absorbs, but that's not the right word. But it allows the other embossing powder just to, just to stick. And then I hit it with my heat tool and melt it. And it gets just the slightest little bit of glitter. And I love it. So it adds just a little bit of glitter, a little bit of elegance to these otherwise very creepy images, right? These images are from All and Create, which I love me some All and Create. I will try to remember to list them downstairs, link them if at all possible. And um, they won't be affiliate links, but um, they're a lot of fun. They're kind of creepy, but they're also very pretty. And of course, depending on how you use them, you know, they can, they can work for many different things. So I have four little backgrounds, right? I have two images. So that means cut, and here we go. Ooh, now it didn't hurt this time. <laughs> that was my plan all along. I like that they're like butted up right up against the edge and it gives the impression that there's more, right? That it adds a little bit of mystery, like what is what was happening on the other side of that? Of course we see what was happening, but from a creative perspective and, um, you know, it just, when you see one card, you're like, ooh, what could have been there? What What is that all about? What got cut off? What is this card not telling us? And I just think it's fun. Maybe that's me being extra again. 
I don't know. <laughs> but here I am. I'm adhering both of my skulls down. I've got them popped up on some foam tape and I'm cutting off these extra bits. But don't for a second think that those extra bits go to waste. Oh no, no. I will add them. They will find a home in a new spot. You see that, that that little drippy bit already found a home, right? And there are more. And now it's time to snip the butterfly as well. Snip. But it's okay because it looks great. It looks great on this card. And I want to say that three of these cards already have homes. But if you are interested in trading in ATC with me, I still have one that needs a new home. If no one wants to trade, that's fine. It'll stay home with me. I love it. Not a worry at all. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, if you'd like to trade in ATC, whether it's one of these or if you want to do something completely different, drop me a message downstairs. I am open. So there I had just a little bit of foam tape was showing through, so I had to snip that and I used my little pokey tool from Honeybee just to pull that little double-sided foam tape out and again snipping off the excess drippy bits and they will find a home. Right here is how I'm doing it. Put a little bit of glue on the back, slide it up under there and it gets adhered directly down to the um, background. So there's added dimension again, right? And these drippy bits, <clears throat> excuse me, coming off the skull, again just tell some more, some more story, but you get to make up the story. And here I have these beautiful baubles from Studio Katya. Some of them are clear, some of them have an iridescence to them, but you know, there's no color, so they just add some texture and some dimension and some shine. And I add them. <clears throat> Excuse me, some of them are just randomly placed. Some of them are very strategically placed, as in the eye sockets on the skulls. I think that's kind of cool. And then here I'm adding some of the clipping stickers from Tim Holtz Ideology. They are the Halloween version, and these are so cool. I'm in love with these. Like, I didn't think I would use these clippings, I think I got them during a swap when I did a swap with the Craft Collabs group several years ago now. Um, I think it was with Miss Diane, if I'm not mistaken. She sent me a bunch of cool stuff, and this was in that package. My memory is coming back, and I do believe it's from Miss Diane. So thank you, Miss Diane. I love these. And so now I am just bringing in a white gel pen, adding some detail and some highlights, and I also come in with a black pen. I think it's my, my Le Pen. Yep, it sure is. Look, my Le Pen Permanente. It is a micro... Oh, a micron pen. I'm looking to see if it has the the size. I don't see the size. But anyway, it's a very fine point. And I just add some detail with both, both of those, the black and the white. And here I just wanted you to be able to see up close because so much of that detail is missed. I also used my Posca pens to add some splatter. And you can see the iridescence of that bobble from Studio Katya on the eye. And then again, I added it in some strategic places on the butterflies as well. And some of them, like I said, are iridescent. Some of them are clear, but they do pick up the background colors. You see that? And you can see the crackle. You can see the splatter. You can see the beautiful stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. You can see the stamping because, again, I use those stars from ACLD, or no, I'm sorry, from All in Create, and you can see the fun um, spider web there. That is from a Stampers Anonymous stamp set from Tim Holtz. And just all of that detail, I did not want it to be missed. Isn't that amazing? I love every bit of it. Every bit of it. The splatter, that beautiful ink-stained background, so much fun and again this was my five by seven piece of watercolor card that i used to create all four of these and these are my cards and even though for some it hurts to cut an image in half it didn't this time i thought it was so fun like i could see the end product already in my head when i was starting this process so sierra of sierra t designs thank you for swapping atcs with me i can't wait for them to arrive in the mail i know it takes forever to get to and from canada and the u.s but thank you and again if anybody else wants to swap with me you let me know i am game 
Y'all, this is Nancy, the Handy Scandy. This is another in my Halloween card series for 2021. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up if you would. If you're not already a member of my Crafty Tribe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And this is Nancy, the Handy Scandy. For now, I'm out. Thanks.